suicide drones that are shifting the war balance. The US finally has an answer to Russia in Ukraine. Military weapons, including drones, armored vehicles, and machine guns worth up to $800 million, will be provided to Ukraine by the United States as part of a bigger effort to strengthen Ukrainian forces against Russia's incursion. It'll be delivered under the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, which allows the United States to acquire weapons directly from manufacturers rather than providing weapons from its own stockpiles to Ukraine. The current package demonstrates that after weeks of battle, the aid provided to Ukraine is shifting as the United States and its allies gain a better understanding of Moscow's offensive tactics and Kiev's capabilities. Since Russia's invasion, the Pentagon has committed more than $1.6 billion in security assistance to the Ukrainian forces. Puma unmanned aerial systems, lightweight drones with a range of about a dozen miles and a flight time of about two hours will be included in the new assistance, which will provide Ukrainian infantry with enhanced surveillance capabilities for an extended period of time. The Pentagon reportedly plans to deliver Ukraine non-standard machine guns, which means the weapons will not be utilized on a regular basis by the United States military. This is in addition to armored Humvees, night vision devices, thermal imagery systems, tactical secure communication systems, commercial satellite imagery services, medical supplies, and switchblade kamikaze drones. But what even is a kamikaze drone? Welcome to Drone Zone, the channel that brings you the latest, most exciting news and info about drones. In today's video, we talk about the Switchblade Kamikaze drones. So make sure to stay till the end of the video to know how these drones will change the balance of the war to Ukraine's favor. The Switchblade is a miniature loitering munition designed by Aerovironment and used by several branches of the United States military. Small enough to fit in a backpack, the Switchblade launches from a tube flies to the target area and crashes into the target while detonating its explosive warhead. Introduced in 2011, the original Switchblade has been rebranded as the Switchblade 300 after the Switchblade 600 anti-armor variant was unveiled in 2020. In the Switchblade's insides lie an explosive and camera, making it a flying camera robot. These all-electric devices are weapons that will aid in the detection and attack of nearby attackers rather than far-off adversaries. The Switchblade 300 and the Switchblade 600 are two different sizes of Switchblades. Despite the fact that both can be carried by one person, the weight difference is significant. The 300 weighs only 5.5 pounds and may be carried in a backpack, for example. The 600 is significantly heavier, with the missile itself weighing 33 pounds and the components required for transporting it weighing significantly more. With a range of slightly more than 6 miles, the Switchblade 300 is capable of flying for a total of 15 minutes and hitting targets. And with a flight range of 25 miles and a flight time of 40 minutes, the 600 can go even longer distances. The Switchblade is equipped with cameras, and the video captured by these sensors, as well as GPS data and image processing, is used to steer the Switchblade through its environment. As well as being capable of receiving targeting information from other drones, the Switchblade is also capable of tracking and locating specific targets. In that case, it becomes just another weapon among a variety of others that can be directed at an objective based on targeting information provided by other drones. In contrast to other drones that are only used for reconnaissance, the Switchblade 300 carries a tiny explosive payload, which is most likely to be used to target people or unsecured weapons such as a mortar launcher or an exposed machine gun emplacement. The payload of the bigger Switchblade 600 is an anti-armor warhead, which makes it helpful against armor-protected vehicles. A huge advantage to the Switchblade is that whenever the human in charge of the Switchblade realizes that the weapon no longer has a target, they might order it to be called off and then recovered. The Switchblade 600's brochure promises that the weapon is equipped with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. In the words of Aerovironment, the firm that manufactures the Switchblade, it is a tactical missile system which alludes to the machine's bizarre dual-role capabilities. A flying scout as well as an armed weapon, this is what it is all about. This type of weapon is formally referred to as a loitering munition. Despite the fact that these appear to be a relatively contemporary design, there is an historical context. The Kettering Bug, an unmanned biplane built in 1918 that is regarded as a precursor to both drones and cruise missiles, flew for a short period of time until an internal signal caused its wings to be released and it plummeted into the earth with its explosive payload. Modern loitering munitions are designed to fly for an extended period of time while using sensors to search for targets such as anti-air missile sites and radar installations. Even with the maximum endurance of the Switchblade 600, the drone can only fly for 40 minutes at a time, 
and the limited flight time of a Switchblade 300 is barely sufficient to qualify it as a loitering drone. They were referred to as kamikaze drones or suicide missiles when they were first proposed and tested. During its coverage of the prototype Switchblades more than a decade ago, Popular Science referred to the drones as flying assassin robots and kamikaze suicide drones. All of those titles reflect a crucial aspect of the category. When one of these weapons explodes, it can never be utilized or recovered again once it has been destroyed. The Switchblade, like many other drones, is guided by waypoint navigation, in which a human designs a path on a map and the robot, once launched, takes off on its own. AeroVironment's chief marketing officer Steve Gitlin said that, unlike radio control devices, the operator is not flying the aircraft, the operator is simply indicating where he wants to look, where he wants the camera to be pointing, and the onboard computer flies the aircraft to that point and maintains on target. A similar capability is available in our tactical unmanned aircraft systems. It's possible to lock onto a target and have the aircraft basically hold its position on that target on its own. He also said that people who subscribe to our channel are the best. Okay, he didn't say that, but it'll be cool if you subscribe and leave a like. It really helps us. Is it possible that other software on the Switchblade, such as feature and object recognition, contributes to the weapon's capacity to locate and track a target? In the strictest sense, it's not an autonomous weapon, but it is a weapon with autonomous qualities, which has the potential to alter how people use weapons in the future. Whether or not it meets the formal definition of an autonomous weapon is less relevant than knowing how switchblades make use of the autonomous capabilities that they possess. Arthur Holland Michel, a scholar of drones and autonomous war machines, says it's probably best to set aside the definitional issues and instead focus on the fresh as well as familiar challenges and threats that are created by the developing autonomy of weapon systems. Consider the following scenario. Do the operators have sufficient situational awareness to make a judgment on the use of force? Do the weapons give a sufficient control surface for human operators to take prudence during an attack? Given the short flight time between launch and impact for switchblades, particularly switchblade 300s, the person firing the weapon is forced to operate in a similar manner to that of a person launching an anti-air missile at a plane, placing their trust in the missile's own targeting system to hit the target it's intended to hit. What distinguishes the switchblade from other missiles is that the human operator has the option of aborting the assault if something changes, such as a civilian strolling into the area or the cameras indicating that what the operator thought was a tank was actually a school bus instead of a tank. That's in contrast to something like a high-flying Reaper drone, which fires missiles that can't be redirected once they've been launched. One of the most promising aspects of weapon control systems like this is the capacity to exercise that level of control and, in effect, to unfire a missile that has already taken off in the air. A human being who is responsible for launching missiles in battle must be able and willing to keep an eye on the missile's own video stream until it is completed before that promise can be fulfilled. That's it for today's video. Let me know if you think these kamikaze drones will shift the war balance as everyone else thinks. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video just like I've enjoyed making it, and make sure to comment with any future videos that you're interested in watching. I'll be seeing you all soon, and as always, subscribe or crash.